Mike Pacella here. Greetings and warm salutations to you and yours, and thanks for tuning into this lesson. I'll be talking about Till There Was You, as recorded by the Beatles on July 30th, 1963. Now, when I was a kid, if there was a girl you wanted to impress, you'd call her on the phone and play her this song. <laughs> Never failed. Uh, Till There Was You was written by Meredith Wilson uh, for the Music Man musical, and it was first sung by Shirley Jones in the film who did a kind of a really schmaltzy There were bells on the hill version. Um, it, it got the attention of Paul McCartney by Peggy Lee's version, which was kind of jazzy. And the Beatles did it their own way, kind of a cha-cha, rockin' cha-cha uh, version of the song. Well, on January 1st, 1962, that's when they were going in for their DECA audition. And uh, with Pete Best on drums, by the way, they recorded 15 songs in one hour. And Till There Was You was one of those songs. Well, we all know they were rejected by uh, Decca AR uh, man uh, Richard uh, Paul Rowe, who will forever be known as the man who let the Beatles go. And Lennon was pissed off, and he blamed the, the uh, inclusion of songs like Till There Was You as the reason they got rejected by Decca. But uh, Brian uh, Epstein, who the Beatles always pronounced it Epstein, those little Beatle lads, uh, took it to George Martin in February, uh, a tape of that uh, DECA session, and Till There Was You was the song that impressed George Martin the most, and uh, probably the reason why they got signed to EMI. Okay, fast forward to July 18th, 1963, they're uh, in the studio to uh, EMI to record uh, with the Beatles, and they try three takes of Till There Was You, no good. Had Ringo on drums, and it just wasn't working out. Next time they go back in the studio is on uh, July 30th, 63, and this time they put Ringo on bongos. They do five more takes, so eight takes all together, and the last take is a winner. This is live to tape, uh, singing and playing everything live, and they did an incredible job. The song was uh, used a lot in their live performances. Um, they mixed it on August 21st. The mix isn't, you know, uh, that great of a mix. Again, mixed by jo uh, Jeff Emmerich, Martin, and, and, uh, and uh, Norman Smith. I had to really dig in deep to get the, all the parts, but I got them right. And uh, they also recorded the song eight times for the BBC. They used to have to do uh, recorded versions of it. They would always thought it was a ripoff to play the record for some reason on the BBC, so they would record versions of it when they would appear on, on, on BBC radio. So they did eight times of that. They played a lot in their live performances. Uh, they did it at the Royal Command Performance. It was the second song they did on the, on the Sullivan Show. And, and it was a smart choice because on the Sullivan Show, especially for the American audience, that was the song that kind of solidified the band to the parents. Like, oh, these aren't just a bunch of, you know, bonehead rock and rollers. They could also uh, you know, sing a, a, a schmaltzy song and do a heck of a job on it. It was released on uh, uh, January 20th, 1964 in America uh, on uh, Meet the Beatles, which would have been kind of the first time uh, us kids would have heard it back then. So I think that's the backstory. There's some amazing parts uh, we'll, we'll go through. John and George just do a fantastic, uh, 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 you know, interpretation of the song. So let's get started. John Lennon is playing his uh, Gibson J160 on Till There Was You, and his part is very playful. It's almost uh, like he's mocking the song, but when John Lennon mocks, it's still a brilliant part. So to play the, uh, the intro, you'll need uh, four chords. You'll need an F like that, a G flat diminished, people call that an F sharp, but since the key of F has one flat, I'm going to call my flats flats. <laughs> You'll need a G minor, and a C9. So the first four measures are simple, it's just one, two, three, and four. Uh, it goes like this. Now the fun begins on the verse. He does uh, a lot of ghosting, and here's, here's a, another example of John Lennon ghosting. Um, if you were gonna write it out, which I do, and I'm, I'm referring to my charts too, because there's just too much to, to memorize. Um, it would be like, the first beat would be a, a dotted eighth note to a sixteenth note, and then beat two is kind of ghosted or muted. And it sounds like this. And so it's very slow, it would be. Mute on two. Right? See that? And then G flat diminish. 
Then that same pattern on the G minor. And now you'll need a B flat minor voice like this. Okay, so those first four measures of a verse. Hear that? Very cool. All right, now to complete, you'll need an A minor, and you'll need an A flat minor. And now you have all the chords for a verse. So when we get to the F, it's oh, on these on the A minor, A flat minor, it's always a, uh, accented on the upbeat. So it's like. So let me play you the first verse with Mr. Metronome. Thank you. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> this is great plan, just very playful and uh, a little irre irreverent. But, uh, you know, there's John Lennon. Now, in the second verse, you'll need an F9 at the end uh, uh, to, to get into the bridge. So you'll need this chord. Right? And it's similar. I mean, he plays different. It's, it's, I'll do it slow. The second verse goes like... And he, he drags that um, G, flat G flat diminished up a minor third. And, you know, you can call that a... You can call that any of those notes... If you want, you can call it an A diminished, you can call it an E flat diminished, a C diminished, or a G flat diminished. Again, that's just the way those work out. So however you want to think of that. Uh, I think of it as an A diminished. I'm usually thinking the, the top note. Um, but again, second verse. That's a really big accent John does on that F9. Okay, now we get into the bridge. Let's see, is there any new chords? Uh, B flat, B flat minor. I yeah, need B flat minor. You have that F. Oh, you'll need a D9. A G minor to G7. C9, which you already have. And then C augmented, I'm going to call that one. And again, I'm naming the chords relative to what McCartney's playing on the bass. So we get to the bridge. He does that same, that same kind of, uh, you know, ghosted pattern, like... <laughs> nice, uh, you know, dotted, uh, two dotted quarter notes. Same thing on G minor. Now when he gets to the G7, he plays uh, qu three quarter note triplets to two quarter notes. So it's... And then uh, C, C9. And then the C augmented, he plays, he plays a figure like... Let me just play the bridge for you now so you can hear it. From the bridge, two, here we go. Just cool playing. On the third verse, um, what's different on the third verse? Let's see. Oh, he goes up on the on the G flat uh, diminished. He goes like that, and then a different figure on the G minor. The G minor is. Let me just play the third verse for you. One, two, ready, go. If you want to get it perfectly, again, I'll have the charts and tabs at, uh, for you to download at MikeBocelli.com, and I'll also play it exactly like uh, John plays it when I do my sound alike. Now on the solo section, again referring to my chart, 
he gets very playful while George is playing that great solo. John does kind of a cha-cha thing there too with like staccato notes. He plays, he goes, um, um, at the beginning of it, and then a pattern like, and here he plays a G flat, you know, a G flat. And then, um, yeah. And he continues that on the on the on the on the bridge now. Uh, and one more new pattern on the bridge. The bridge is like, um, let's see. Uh, this time on the C, he plays a C seventh for two beats. He goes, and then on the C augmented, it's a. Uh, Again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it'll just the lesson will be six hours long. But again, if you want the charts and tabs, you can get it at MikeBacilli.com. Just talk about the ending. Now, the very ending, which is page four, um, so you're coming out of the last verse. Uh, it's kind of the same, you know, ghosted thing that he did on an F, like. Um, uh, let's see. Now, then it goes C to E to C to F to a D flat to an F. And the figure on C is like, you play the bottom part of the C and then you strum through it like to the bottom part of an E to the bottom part of the C. So it's like. Oh, John actually is just going. Oops. And it's only one chord doing the last uh, F major seven, but I like to have John do it too. So just let me play that very ending in time from the C. You know, till that was you, that part. Just a great part and uh, it's so inventive and, and you know John was just doing it off the cuff but uh, those are the parts and again take a look at the charts to download at MikeBacilli.com if you want to get it exact. I just love what George Harrison did on Till There Was You. I mean it's a 20 year old rocker who's also capable of being so tasty and uh, tasty he is until there was you so um, he stays out of the way of the rhythm guitar and just adds these perfect little licks unfortunately there there a lot of them are buried in the mix but uh, I've deciphered it and here's what he does so at the very beginning he, he it's nothing special but it's a perfect part he plays uh, off the F chord by playing the the root the third and uh, the root the fifth and the third you know to the G flat diminish. Same thing on G minor, he plays the uh, fifth, third root to the uh, root of C. So it's, it sounds like this. Just the perfect part. Now during the verse, um, with kind of a, again with this triplet feel, he plays these little arpeggios. So the, it goes like. Mm. Right, so again, that's just you know the uh, the F triad to the uh, G flat diminished triad to a G minor triad to a B flat minor triad, and just arpeggiates through it like in triplets, like one. Just perfect part. Now to stay out of the way of, of the uh, you know the big full A minor of the rhythm chords, he plays the bottom part of, of the chords. So he slides on the uh, from a C to an E and plays just like the fifth and the and the root of A minor and A flat minor G minor. So he goes, it's the third on the G minor and the C nine just plays a C, and then he waits a measure. Right. So here here's the first verse one. It's 
just such a mature part for a 20 year old kid. Uh, second verse is similar, except for the ending. So the second verse is. I just love how, how tasty he is and, and, and how he stays out of the way, but he adds. Okay, so now during the bridge, it's B flat to B flat minor. And um, he just plays, he plays the root. So he, he waits a couple beats. He goes, one, two. Lays out. And on the D9, he goes, um, one. All right, just, you know, D9. Now it's G minor, and he and he waits a beat. Starts on the end of one. He goes one. It's a C, and for the C augmented, he goes. So coming out of that for verse three, he plays some great licks. He goes. for that fantastic solo. Now the solo, again, is just so intelligent. Uh, it's, it starts off based on just a, 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 an F scale, you know, those notes, but he, he starts on beat four. It's one, two, three. All right, it's just up and down an F scale uh, to a G flat diminish. Gets in, in the proper uh, position for the G minor and he plays bars the third fret and he hammers on the G string and the E string to imply the ninth and the fourth of G minor. Slides that up a minor third to do the same on, on B flat minor. Then like an uh, F6 arpeggio and he plays his uh, version of A minor to A flat minor to G minor here. Um, to a spectacular uh, G flat seventh uh, raise nine. More little F licks. And another uh, G flat diminished lick. And then he's gonna end on the uh, fifth and third of B flat. Right. Let me get a very slow close up of that solo for you. Okay, so coming out of that, it's just uh, the second bridge. He's on the uh, a, a B flat, the third of a B flat. When it goes to B flat minor, he plays the third again, and then he waits and he plays a really nice on this D nine. He goes for the G minor, <clears throat> waits on the C seventh and the C augmented. He goes. <laughs> and then some more uh, for verse four, some more great licks. Same on the low. One, two. And at the very ending, he plays pretty much the same thing that the rhythm guitar plays, but he strums through it more. He's a little more powerful. It's like a, he, uh, it's instead of just playing the low notes, it's, it's all of the, all of the, all six strings pretty much. It's like. Now for this F, he plays this F, and he plays a, a triple figure. He goes, he goes. And then for his D flat, he plays. And then back to F. And 
is F major 7th. So let me play that ending for you it's, uh, again. Just an absolutely marvelous part by George Harrison. Well, I put it all together so you can uh, see how the parts all fit. Uh, use it as a reference, play along with me, and you'll get it just like the Beatles. So here we go. I certainly hope you enjoyed that. Um, this was probably one of my most requested songs. Truth be told, I, I hesitated in doing it because it was a monster to write the charts out and get the parts exact on that uh, sound alike, but uh, I did my best. So play along with it and you'll get it just like the Beatles. And if you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where the charts and tabs are available to download. And please subscribe to this channel. So until next time, have fun playing the guitar. I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me. Mm -hmm.